Questions? Coach, what did you say to Armando in the locker room or, or when you all braced after you came off the court after those two records today? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I just want to, you know, talk about Traquavian. Um, you know, he's just an unbelievable kid and an unbelievable player, and um, you never want to see anybody get hurt or injured. And um, my hope and my prayer is that um, that he's not hurt and injured. Um, he's a fantastic player, and um, just wanted to just talk about him. And just let you know that um, just didn't like seeing that. So, <laughs> um, in regards to uh, Armando, I'm just—it's uh, very hard. It's not very hard to describe. Um, you know, I said to you guys before that one of the greatest feelings as a coach is to know what a player or a team what they're, you know, what they're bringing to the table every day. And for Armando. That's what I have in him. Every day, at practice, shoot around, game, you know that he's going to give his best on both ends of the floor uh, for himself, for the team, for this program, um, and for him to pass um, Tyler Hansbro and uh, Billy Cunningham for the all times uh, double doubles and points and rebounds. That's just. Just unbelievable. He's a fantastic player. He's one of the best players in Carolina history, and I'm just really, really proud of him. You challenged Pete Nance. You said you challenged Pete Nance to be more aggressive on the offensive end. How satisfied were you with him with his play on the offensive end, especially with that dunk in the second half? Well, I thought he was really good on both ends of the floor. You know, I thought uh, his rebounding was really good. Um, I thought his screening and um, <coughs> distributing the basketball was really good. That that when he attacked the basket and dumped it, like that's who he is, and we've got to and I've got to do a better job of putting him in situations that he can do that more. And so, you know, out there on the floor to have somebody that is not only talented but experienced um, gives great confidence to me as a coach out there on the sideline. And so I'm just um, it's really neat to have Pete a part of this type of atmosphere, and um, I'm so thankful and I'm so glad that he's here at Carolina. Huber, you like to talk about playing with pace. Um, the pace, the pace that RJ's playing with, you know, it's measured, uh, you know, in some ways. Like, is that is has he is he? The cliche goes, "Let the game come to you." Is he letting the game come to him? You know, twenty six points. I think it was on eight shots tonight from the field. Well, he's playing at a, an extremely high level. You know, I talked about at the beginning of the year, and he didn't mention it. He was dealing with you know a finger injury on his shooting hand and. You know, that, um, that affected him in terms of being able to shoot the ball percentage-wise the way that he felt like and we all felt like he could shoot. Um, but over the last month and a half, he's, he's played at an All-American level. I mean, his ability to score, distribute. Um, the thing that I was most impressive about was his defense today. Every time he picked up full court, and you talk about NC State, one of the things that they're great at is defensive pressure and making you turn the ball over and making it very difficult for you to get into your offense. I thought the pressure of RJ really set our defense in, in terms of being aggressive and being able to uh, make them run their offense a little bit further out than they do in shoot around. And an all around game, I just, I just thought RJ was fantastic. Coach, only five uh, three-point attempts in the second half for you guys. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Was, was that an intentional decision yes. coming out of that? Well, I wouldn't say you only take five, but, I mean, we, you know, we talked about after playing Boston College that 29 threes was just too much. Um, at the beginning of the game, I thought we took too many quick threes. <coughs> I love threes. And, um, I do. But, you know, we're the best in the conference in terms of getting to the free throw line. And currently right now, NC State is the worst at putting people at the free throw line. So, um, you know, going into the game, it was important for us to attack the basket through post of penetration and, 
you know, after that first six or seven minutes in the first first half, I thought we did a better job of putting our head down, penetrating, getting to the free throw line. We got into the penalty. And why I like it is not only getting them in foul trouble, not only do we get to the free throw line, we're a good free throw shooting team. So it was a great way for us to catch back up and to be able to score and extend the lead. You what guys did you have... see on the Smith play, and, and what did you talk to Leakey about, whether on the court or, or after? Well, I talked to Leakey after the game because Leakey is such a, a sweet, kind kid, you know, and I just, um, he was worried about Turquavian. You know, that's for both teams. The, the, today is, was a, a contest between two unbelievably great programs and great teams. And nobody wants anybody to get hurt or injured. And, um, you know, Leakey went over when they were um, taking Tequavian off the um, off the court, and Leakey's already asked for uh, Tequavian's uh, phone number so he can call and just check up on him and see to make sure he's okay. You guys have won 9 out of 11. One of the losses was up at UVA without Armando and Pete. Where do you think your team is right now at this stage where you're almost halfway through the ACC schedule? Guys, I don't think of it that way. I don't look at where we are. and I, I just, one of the things that I always think about is, you know, just making sure that we're improving and just getting better every day and at the end of the day the results will take care of itself and so do I think we can get better yes I think we can get better defensively I think we can do better shooting the basketball I think we can do a better job taking care of the basketball those are things that I think throughout the year any team wants to continue to improve on but um, I like I feel like we are getting better I feel like we are improving and that's something that we want to do and Throughout the year, we just want to get better and better, and I feel like we are. Is the improving consistent, or is it kind of sporadic? It's getting, it's getting consistent. I was really encouraged with us defensively today. I really was. I haven't told them yet, but they ruined it because they showed me they can't. <laughs> and so now I have tape. <laughs> I've got proof that you can win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. You can move your feet. You can defend without fouling. You can box out. You can rebound. You can sprint and talk on defense. So I appreciate them giving me proof and evidence that, that we can do it and we can do it consistently. And so um, I just take it day by day. You know, it was a great win today and um, we'll enjoy today. And then tomorrow I'll think about Syracuse and play them on Tuesday night. And then that's where our focus is, is on our preparation and our practice to see if we can Go up to Syracuse and play a really good, really good Syracuse team. Take two more. So, Huber, go, Huber, what, <clears throat> go ahead. What does it say to you about being able to win like this today against a team that's kind of physical defensively and you know extended, make, made you guys kind of start your offense farther out and that kind? Because of, I felt like it was almost like an Iowa State kind of physicality wise. They they're about the same. It was it was physical out there. I. I I know I can't remember that much, but I, I, I remember Iowa State being very physical. But I, um, NC State, they were they're, they're really good. You know, I mean, after every you know dead ball situation, picking up full court, um, making it hard to just to bring the ball up the floor. We were starting our offense pretty much at half court. Um, every pass, every cut, um, every move was met with a body and. And a shoulder and an elbow, and it was extremely physical. And we had to not only match that physicality, but we had to be able to execute on both ends of the floor through that. And I, I felt like throughout the game, we got more used to it. I think at the beginning of the game, it was like, man, these, these guys are good. They're physical. And I felt like throughout the game, we got better and better at attacking them on both ends, and it just allowed us to be able to win today. In that light, we had a season low seven turnovers. Six of them were in the first half. We only had one in the second half. You had the last question. I just wanted to follow up on RJ. For him to get to the line even as many times he has at his size, you know, what, what is it that enables him to do that? And you know, what does it sort of say that somebody that size is able to you know, consistently bully his way to the line? Well, you know, he's a really good rebounder uh, for his size defensively, so he's in the mix. And, um, you know, him picking up full court and then him and Caleb having the ball in their hands and having to handle that pressure, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do is, you know, um, get
get some isolation, ball screen action, and really be able to attack their big guys. And RJ does a really good job of coming off those ball screens and really putting a lot of pressure on those bigs to move their feet. And if they don't move their feet, he can he can draw fouls. And I think he's still the, the league leader in free throw shooting percentage. So I like when he goes to the free throw line. And um, he's done a really good job of doing that, of creating fouls. and. Um, getting to the free throw line, and that's something, another layer to his game that has allowed him to be so successful. He was coming in at 14 for 14.